Well, hello, Jewel here. I have speaking today about Pluto. Pluto. It is a pain in my butt because they say it is Pluto, the god, the Roman god of the underworld. Well, hello, since when is the underworld masculine? We're talking yin and yang, which I always do. I am obsessed. I'm obsessively Taoist. <laughs> so here I go. Um, yin is dark and cold. Yang is fiery, hot, light. Get it? So however you want to dribble all the details down, that's where we start. And when we do that, we have the Tao ball. I didn't get a picture, but you know what it looks like. It's the round thing with the wavy line, the black side, the white side, the black dot in the white side, the white dot in the black side. What does that mean? It doesn't mean duality two. It means three. And guess why it means three? Because two and two, the one mix, mixes into the other, and they do that along that wavy line, which is the third thing, and makes the circle, which is the third thing. In other words, the two come together to make the one, not the other way around. Like we get the one God makes everything in duality. The one God splits off and makes two. Well, that's true. But then it's also true that the two then come together to make a one, which means that the whole circle keeps being completed in a three, six, nine form, which is what Tesla was talking about, which is why words can be so confusing and stupid and why I want to talk. What happened in my life? Oh, there it is. To talk about Pluto is not a raper god of the underworld, because that's what they're telling us. All right, so... I don't want to make this long, so give me a few minutes, I'll get it done, and then you can look at something else. But trust me, it's worth staying to the end because this is an interesting topic. It really is. All right, so the Romans were already, I mean, they had some goddesses, yes, but they were already, like women were just stay home, don't go outside. Have babies, and we'll protect you, and you stay inside the house. This is how the Romans worked it, at least, you know, for the the upper class. I'm sure for the peasants, it's always the same. Everybody works their ass off until they hurt so bad they die. So there's that. Anyway, back to the Roman god of the underworld. I don't know why they had to change that yin quality of darkness and coldness uh, to a god, but they did. Uh, they also changed the uh, crone into a, a dude, father, instead of mother time. And they also changed Neptune of the sea, the ocean, which is deeply, deeply feminine, and gave it a ruler of a masculine ruler. So there's that. But anyway, today is just about Pluto because Pluto has been in Capricorn for so many years, since 2008, I think. And then um, now, so um, going into Aquarius, it's been dipping back into Capricorn for the last few weeks. It'll be in six weeks, it'll be back in Aquarius, which is going to be a giant cultural shift, gigantic. Anyway, so what does that mean to us in the world and to our culture? And really, because Aquarius is a, a sign that represents uh, the collective. You know, how do you fit into the collective? And, and so do you, you can't, it's it's a agape love. In other words, it's the love of the universal, um, the people in the church. There's the steeple and here's the people, right? So it's the people. Now, um, what that represents is that we're all in a club. Now, there's a difference between tribe and club. Because tribe is the fourth house, that's the Cancerian energy, the lunar energy of belonging to the group, and you sway and you do as the group does, and you move within when we dance the drums, boom, 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 we're in the same tribe, we play the same songs, right? But in Modernia, oh boy, we got that exploded, and in Modernia now, we have um, a giant tribe, which is like... It's a bigger thing. It's in the world instead of in the home. So um, that's it's kind of like society is a bigger scale of tribalism. Yeah. But so it's got a different flavor and it's Aquarian flavor instead of and which is Uranus. It's a father. It's a yang thing. Whereas, oh, do you like my hair? This haircut is in honor of my dead son, Arlo. Let's see how it sticks out. All right. Um, 
Aquarius, I'm not forgetting. I just noticed that I wanted to explain my hair earlier and I will. Anyway, Aquarius is the big club you belong to. What is the world club you're in, right? And so what, what's going to go on now is that Pluto is a combined god and goddess and it is a, it's a bigger thing than just lady or man. It's not yin or yang. It is the conjunction of yin and yang. It is the when the atom gets split, boing, right? Because it's a thing, and then it's it's ex exploded, and then all the exploded things become little things that become exploded. This is Kabbalistic talk, and honestly, I'm not a deep thinker on anything. I'm a Gemini. We just skim right over the surface of things. But what I am is a deep diver, and I I see patterns, and so. That's how I work. If you like it, stick with it. All right. Um, so what are the key mentality? What are the key words, concepts for um, for Pluto, which is just a higher octave of Mars, um, a higher octave of, um, of, of Aries, which is Scorpio. Now, the whole Kundalini thing is about from your from your um, from your cooch to the top of your head energy flows in and it goes down to your cooch it goes down your spine right and then it zips around and it makes you horny and then you make a thing uh and you have an orgasm and then zippy it zips back up and out and it takes all that yummy yummy juicy uh, earthy endocrine um lusty uh, earthy lit, alive thing takes it up to god because see god doesn't have a body right and god is interested and curious. How can I have a body? I want a body. And his wife is the body. So he has to go into his wife and she has to then stir things up and spit it out. And then the two have become one. And we're the spit out part. Everybody's born. Everybody gets spit out from between a lady's legs. And the reason we get that happening to that lady is because some guy stuck his sperm in her egg. This is so basic, and I am tired and tired of philosophy dudes, and I watch a lot of men talk about ideas because I'm really interested in that. But you know what? Basically, everybody, they're all saying the same thing, but with so many, many complicated words, and you don't need those complicated words. All you need is this simple thing, sperm and egg. That is it. And after that, sperm, egg, yin-yang, cold, hot, you can just kind of filter it all out into anything you're doing in life. And when you do that, why do you want to do that? Well, I'll tell you why I do it. I do it because I think it helps me understand myself, myself in the world, situations around me. You can always apply this very simple formula to any situation. And when you do, you are then empowered to understand <gasps> Oh, okay. I I get it. Maybe I can put myself into this situation with this particular part of myself that will fit in there and I can create something wonderful. This this to me is the work. This is the work. This is the work we do for the soul because bottom line, you're a soul. You're a spirit in a body which has created a soul. The yin and the yang are totally different, black and white, key and lock, black and white, different shapes, different functions, totally different. And yet we come together in this vessel with this mind. Ooh, isn't this magic? It is freaking magic, people. All right. So the Romans um, had Pluto as a god a dude ruling the dark. Well, why would you have a yang ruling the, the yin place? That doesn't work for me. So the reason that I um, I keep yakking about this is that I want, I want to differentiate the yin and yang so that we can understand ourselves better, right? All right, so um, let's see. Oh, notes, notes, notes. Okay, so I saw an astrologer say that um, it's the underworld and it's ruled by 
uh, it rules gold and the minerals of the earth, you know, wealth, in other words, what it, Pluto is about wealth. And um, so, and that's what Scorpio is about. It's, and it's about debt and gain and loss. So what is that? What do you value? What, who values you? But um, what do you have? What are you willing to gamble with? What are you willing to lose? What have you lost? Right. And so even though the goddesses remained in Rome, but they, but they still, um, they became demoted because the, the, the feminine was losing her purchase in the world as writing and left brain stuff gained function as it gained prominence. So we started writing things down and that emphasized our left logical brain, which is the masculine side of our brain, which is why men mansplain because they're trying to help us and they perceive us as needing their help because we seem so flaky, we girls. And because we girls are considering many contextual parts of the story, we like narrative. We're, I'm going to talk to you for hours about this and all the nuances and what I felt like and what I saw that my friend was like. And then what happened to them and why, oh, why did they get so upset about that? Or maybe they made up. And would that be because you had on a green shirt or a red shirt? See how we are? All right. Um, Okay, so it's under the surface, and that means it's yin. Because anything that's under the surface that is inside of something is yin. Um, yin is the container that holds life. Uh, within yin, there are processes, and you have to think of the feminine reproductive organs to really understand what happens, in other words, yin is not passive. She is magnetic and reactionary. And that's what women are. Now, women... No, and not just women. Women and men, people, living things, living things have one thing in common. We are all a boy spirit in a girl vessel boy in a girl suit. Okay, now because of this anomaly of the of the two things coming together, we can get confused and that's what's going on now with the trans thing. It is a spiritual problem. And and there are people who are trying to ma make it right and 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 rectify what they feel is discomfort by making rules and uh that's the left brain trying to make the rules let's fix it you know when i was young and pregnant i i always why do i have this old man looking at my cooch and attending my birth and i had the same old man doctor for both kids and even at the time it was just like i was stupid and young and alone i i had a husband but I had no family and I just, you know, I just did what you do. And there, these obstetrician, these male doctors were obstetricians. And so, you know, and I remember his name, he was Dr. Dyer and he was old with a white beard. And when I would ask questions about what was going on and he would just kind of go, <laughs> well, <laughs> and I, you know, he would just sort of brush me off. So when when the left brain tries to attend to the feminine things, it's not a good outcome because women are not just dickless men, okay? And that's what happens. The left brain thinks that the right brain is dumb. But the right brain is very, very intuitive and understands a bigger picture, but she is soft and porous and needs to be protected. So he is there, his function, the left guy, is that his function is to see problems and danger in the environment that he can jump out and protect her from because truly the lady part is just like in awe. <laughs> we need you guys, we need you. But we don't need you to interfere and think that you know better. We, th we need your instant reaction. Now, Pluto is feminine and masculine because it's the 
initial combination of the two. Um, okay, so it's about buried bodies. Bodies are physical. It is about the seeds that are buried in the earth and the potential. So it's very much potential and potential of even the the the, the princess, the Disney princesses. Uh, she is the sleeping potential waiting to be awakened by the sperm prince. Again, sperm. Just keep that in mind, right? Okay. And so... Um, She's about wealth because the the physical is the containment of all the materiality. Long sleeps. I've always said uh, Scorpio is the sexual camel because even though it's associated with sexuality, Scorpio can go long time without. Long, long. Love you not long, long time. So... That's a piece of it. Okay. Long sleeps, uh, gold and silver. In other words, the physical universe is the feminine aspect of God. But when it's incorporated, when that egg is invaded with that sperm, it has a pointy thing that pierces the shell. The sword of the prince gets in that egg and that stirs up all this action. All right, now I'm going to show you fun things. Uh huh. Okay, sharing screen. I will show you those fun things. Okay, so here's one of my favorite uh, images is the three witches and their, their little hand mixers. Wow, that was a lot faster. So the witches and the cauldron, I think, is definitely associated with that. And think of Scorpio season because uh, Scorpio season is in the autumn. It's when the sun is falling. It's when it, things are quieting down. So what do you do? You go into your house and you have sex with your lover and, you you know, and you you think about what happened. I mean, it's getting darker. There's not much to do except in our world there is because we have electronic stuff. But anyway, I love the witch's cauldron. All right, now um, here we have the Kabbalistic perspective, which is one of my favorite things because it's very Taoist. Because as you can see, we have a right side with um, Gemini, Sag, and Aquarius. And let me get a, a, a pencil for you. So we have a right side and that is the yang. And then we have, oh, I like doing this. I love doing this. All right. And then we have the left side, which is the left side of the body, but the right brain. See, and that's where the, the X marks the spot. Nexus. We're Nexus. We're in the, oh, here we go. Yin, yin, yin. Okay. And then the center, see, this is reality. So we have Scorpio at the beginning and Pluto is, you know, they they didn't have Pluto for all the, the ancient, even the recent astrology. It didn't come around until, uh, was it 1930, 30s. And so we didn't even have Pluto. We just have, we had Mars, which is Aries here. So we had this Marsy thing down here and we had the higher octave of Mars right here, right? And so you can see this is the Kundalini. This, this is the, this is our spine. So this diagram represents, you know, a created a creation itself. And so it's brilliant because you've got your 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 right hand is your your masculine side and they say oh you want to go on the right hand of god this is where you want to be and and that's what's written literally in the bible well think about it your left brain rules your right hand and there you go you've got this masculine perspective it's not a bad thing but the fact that we've overemphasized its importance that's the bad part because we smush down the left side, which is the feminine right brain, we smushed her down. Now, if you think of an iceberg, yang is the tip of the iceberg, right? And there's the waves. And yin 
is that giant part of the iceberg that's underneath. So you can see that yin is big, yang is small. And think of the egg and sperm. The egg is giant and the sperm is tiny. Now they're both completely needed and necessary and important. And I think modernia has all of these arguments are just, they're nonsense and meaningless because they don't take into account that size and frequency matter and that there's nothing, there's, there's no competition between the bottom of the iceberg and the top of the iceberg. That isn't a fight. That's just the way it is. All right, so Pluto, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get rid of that. I'm still sharing my screen. Oh, I've got to let me erase. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so Pluto then is a combined energy. It's not, and so having it ruled by the God of, um, by the God who rapes spring, it's just having a raper God for Pluto just doesn't work for me. All right, so here it is. I've got it in my, um, let me show you. All right, this is a diagram I made, I, I don't know. 25 years ago when I first got obsessed by this stuff. And so here's our, our Kabbalistic tree of life. And at the very top is our, um, is that, where is my goodie? Where's my pencil? Mm. I don't know. Well, just can't, I hope you can see my cursor because I can't find my pencil. Ah, there. Let's use a circle. All right, so here we have our top. And you can see that this is like a beginning. This I call this the beginning because when you have a birth, you have a death. When one door opens, another door shuts. Now, the reason that works that way, I when I had those babies, I wanted them out of me. I was so tired of having carrying this load. But once the baby was born, I missed it. I missed my passenger. You lose something when you give birth. That's a beginning. All right, so there is Pluto at the top then. Ah, there we go. So what was Mars is now Pluto. Now, the rulership of um, for Scorpio is Mars. So you say Mars in his feminine form then is Scorpio, right? But in the modern time, we get to just go ahead and use, um, we just get to use Pluto. And I put it at the top of the tree, as you can see. Now, here are the characters. The jailer, the healer, the shaman, the midwife. Uh, it's a wormhole. Uh, when you're a when you're imprisoned or you're a murderer, um, Charon, who's that's the 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 fellow that rows you across the river Styx to go to the underworld. Uh, it's mafia. It's because it's underworld stuff, it's hospice, it's all about birth and death. And then there's more here, tidal waves and earthquakes and mudslides and all disasters that change the landscape, that literally change you. So when there's a birth, it changes the baby from fetus to person. It changes the mother from maiden to mother. Uh, uh, oh, I misspelled drought here. Uh, so it's drought when there's no water. That's the sexual camel. Then that's a long time period of without nourishment, but it goes underground like a seed where it waits until the 
sun comes and heats up the the earth hot enough that that it reaches towards the 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 heat you see so it's about process 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 and it's not just masculine energy so that's why i like the witches i have some movies here the x files which was very popular Deep Cover, which is an old movie with Denzel Washington, I think. And that movie is interesting because it's about how when he's doing the right thing in order to be a good guy and uh, and and get rid of bad guys that are doing bad things. And he goes down in their, in their world and acts like them and does what they do. And it changes him. He becomes evil. And he was trying to do good. So that's very plutonic. And then, of course, the old favorite of Groundhog Day, which is um, beginning. It's beginning all the time. It's all over again. So it's the beginning idea. Okay, I hope this is helpful as Pluto, tic-tac-toe, as Pluto moves into Aquarius, we will have, yeah, I'm back. Hello. Uh, as Pluto moves into Aquarius, things are going to change. And we will begin into our social clubs, our world social club. And we need to be careful because right now there are people who are trying to control the world social club and they have lots of wealth. They have lots of gold and lots of, they planted a lot of seeds and they're going, they are in the process of trying to run the show. And it's about we, the people then saying, wait a minute, we're running this show and this is how we want to run it. Now, one thing we have to remember is not to fall for um, some ideology bullshit, which is Jupiter's uh, world, okay? The ideology bullshit, don't believe your own bullshit. So once you start drinking something, um, that's a problem. Now, Jesus said in the to gospel, Thomas, when you drink from my mouth, you'll be as I am. So that's like believing somebody's bullshit. So the idea is, whose mouth are you drinking from? What fountain are you drinking out of? And we need to drink out of the fountain that comes from our hearts. And I'm going to do one soon about soul. I've been doing a lot of soul stuff I'm thinking about because uh, I'm, you know, where is your soul? Is it, do you get it from the place you're born in? Because in astrology, we need to know where you're born. We need to know the nexus of, uh, you know, the longitude, latitude. And then you become a nexus, you see. And I think the soul is born in a place with a with a um, uh, with 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 the people. It's peopled by the place, and the play and the people are placed by where they're at. You see, I mean, there's a definite integration of spirit and matter together in the place where we're born. And so, having the world be so displaced, like it is, is a problem. Okay, more later, I'm going to call it quits. And oh, if you like and subscribe, I would appreciate it because evidently that would help me uh, get the word out. And um, what else? You can get a consultation from me. I, I'm doing tarology readings. Um, I'm, your soul is speaking. Would you like to know what it's saying to you? And would you like, you know, it's talking to you. You know, your soul is speaking to you, but are you listening are you willing to listen to the voice of your soul? You can hear it all the time. I know you can. All right. And when you get a reading, it's just me being the cheerleader saying, yay, uh, this is what I'm seeing. Are you seeing it? And if you are, then let's encourage that. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the haircut, that's because my baby's hair would do that. And I never realized it's because that's what mine does when it's short right there. Anyway, because he's long gone. And I, one more thing, wanted to know why I can't get the spirit talk from my, my children. Because I, I can't. And you know, they died, you know, a year and a half, two years ago. Both of my children. And so um, then I made this haircut the other day. Because I cut my hair with a razor blade. And um, this happened. And I said, oh, Arlo. So this is a spiritual thing. I know. I know. 
anything that happens is spiritual. This is a holy place and a holy event. Don't forget it. Don't deny it. Even if it's ugly and shitty, there are threads weaving through the universe. I can go on. All right. Um, thanks for listening. I hope it's helpful. That's the whole point of it. And I will see you in the next one.